Each August, hundreds of the world's most promising students pack their bags, make emotional farewells, and head to New York University Abu Dhabi. NYU Abu Dhabi has been my dream for the past four years. Some cross the globe, some come from just down the road. All are united by ambition and talent. Their experiences here will challenge what higher education can be and shape the future of the world. One thing that sets NYU Abu Dhabi apart is the willingness of our professors to take our names and catapult them forward and believe in what we're doing. It's building a world where empathy and listening and open-mindedness is so important because that's what the university is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to teach you to be your own person. Going into NYU Abu Dhabi and seeing all these abundant culture of the UAE, I was mesmerized. Having that chance to meet people that I probably would have never been able to meet in my life otherwise if I hadn't come here. Even though you are not Emirati, even though you are not American, just because we believe in your potential, we want you to be here and have the experience of having a great education. That's for me, is just incredible. That experience at NYU Abu Dhabi has shaped me as a person and it's going to have an impact on every little thing that I do in my life. Now, on the 10th anniversary of NYU Abu Dhabi, we step inside this exceptional university. My first year back at MOU Abu Dhabi as Vice Chancellor has been enormously exciting and energizing. It requires creativity and thinking through things that you may not know how to do yet. I'm Al Bloom. I was honored by having the privilege of starting as Vice Chancellor about a year before the university began. There was a sense when you start out projecting to do something which is going to take risks of holding your breath, hoping that we can really find all those students that the top faculty in the world will come. There were plenty of skeptics who would ask me, well, how can we really teach everything in MW Abu Dhabi that we do in New York? I think it's the wrong question. The question is, what can we do at MW Abu Dhabi that we can't? at MOU in New York. And when you flip that lens, all these vistas open up. I'm very, very passionate about what I do, and I find that being a scientist is intrinsic to my identity. We are in the NYUAD zebrafish facility. What's amazing is we're able to study a disease in this small little larval fish in a way that we couldn't really do in any other system. The undergraduates, when they come in here, they have this wow moment. The noise is really arresting. We expect a lot of our students, and our students expect a lot of us. Students that I've had in class and in my research group are so engaging, and they really think about the material in a very deep way. You know when you have like an embryo that doesn't have anything inside of it? What do you think happened? I think it's probably an issue with the female. They're not even the same size as right. normal eggs. This is a new institution, so if you wanted the same old, same old, you wouldn't come here as a faculty or a staff or a student. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see more embryos. I think a lot of people who haven't been to the Middle East before have an image that the Middle East is one thing. We get those questions, oh, you're working there? Can women work there? I think that that bias needs to really be sort of broken open because I particularly don't feel here like I am anything but valued for my contribution as a scientist. I am Professor Yao Niyako. I'm a professor of economics at New York University. I teach in New York and also in Abu Dhabi. I'm 50-50. I'm what is called a joint professor. We live in a global world. Therefore, I think all of our research, all of our attitudes in life should all be global. And so the first thing that sort of drew me to Abu Dhabi was just a sense of moving outside of what we are comfortable with. The engagement with the Abu Dhabi community is important for a number of reasons. You want to contribute to the society. You want to be a member of that society. And then, of course, all of our research says something about the UAE. 
I'm Bill Bragan. I'm the Executive Artistic Director of the Art Center at NYU Abu Dhabi. I've been here since the beginning. I was the first Artistic Director. So a lot of what we're doing is about opening up a sense of possibility, uh, both for the students on campus, but also for the people in the community who might not have as much exposure to contemporary dance or contemporary theater or more experimental film. So we're constantly trying to look at what's already here but what's not been here. I'm very interested in the idea that the Art Center is putting arts in the middle of a lot of conversations that will reverberate across the campus and across the community. I am a poet, a practicing artist, a writer, and I graduated from NYU Abu Dhabi in 2018. So when I first joined NYU Abu Dhabi, some people would describe me as shy. I was a lot more reserved, but gradually there were activities that I think impacted my character. Shama is a student who I probably started seeing in her freshman year. I remember the first edition of Hekaya, which is our UAE National Day event that's mostly organized around poetry. One of her signature photos from that very first event includes Shama in the crowd, just transfixed and looking at the stage. I joined Hekaya as a co-curator with Bill Brigan, and I performed as a poet as well. And I think that having those opportunities on campus, alongside many other things, really helped. I watched her and championed her as an artist and as a curator. And I've seen her go on now to creating a professional role working in the arts and education. So it's really exciting to see the role that the Art Center can play in helping to support a local artists' journey. Once I graduated, I carved an identity for myself that has NYUAD as a big part of it, but also is independent of the university because that's what the university is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to teach you to be your own person. She got a fellowship from the Sheikh Salama Foundation called SIF, where she did visual art installations. She helped to curate a piece that was in our project space. And also, because she's local and has different kinds of connections, I think has also been a bridge to young Emirati artists or intellectuals from outside the university community to kind of expand our own role. NYU Abu Dhabi's mission was a fully international university that would grant degrees of its home institution, New York University in our case. Then the interesting question became, well, if you do that, what should that education look like? So tell me about what's going on with your context paper. There was a question that I was trying to respond to, that there's so much written work about laborers and then also the other extreme of people who are wealthy or who become wealthy after moving to the region. And just thinking about what does it look like to write about the middle class by what it's not. Of course, you want to draw the impulses from the region that are interesting and dynamic and new and the old heritage seems to be brought in. We added a lot onto it that also came out of the American liberal arts tradition. So I think that articulates the problem of maybe there really isn't a literature of middle classness in the Emirates. So what could be useful for you is to discuss this within the context of the Emirates, Dubai, your okay. experience, and then go out into like the larger world of literature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since we began to run programs here in 2007, we have been part of the history of this country for 25% of the history of the UAE. And so we are similarly dynamic and we soak up that energy in so many ways. My name is Nusba Armago. I'm uh, from Ethiopia and I'm a member of NYU AD's founding class of 2014. I love this class. I taught them in that first year. Uh, they were extraordinary in every way. They were pioneers. Hello, Marie. Hey, hey. How are you? I was Good. born in a small village in Ethiopia. We didn't have uh, much in the modern sense of the world, so we didn't have water or electricity or a hospital, even, or a school. 
Like this is the only picture I have from my childhood. I was about 11 or 12 years of age. I was living with my uncle and he was a very difficult man. The only thing I wanted at the time was like freedom. So I think it was a reminder of where I was and how far I have come in life. And so I will treasure this for, for the rest of my life. When Emoy Abu Dhabi was created, we decided to act on two fundamental truths. One is that talent is evenly distributed around the world. The second is that the opportunity to develop that talent is very unequally distributed. Every university has to do everything in its powers to make sure that inequities of opportunity are eradicated. One of the founders of Ethiopian Education Foundation he heard about NYU Abu Dhabi and um, he told me, Muspa, there is this great university that uh, you might be interested in. I wanted to study something that is related to social sciences or international development. So I think when I came here for the candidate weekend, learned about NYU Abu Dhabi and its focus on liberal arts education, I thought, oh, this is perfect for me. During the four years that I spent at NYU Abu Dhabi, I changed greatly. I traveled to over 20 countries, I believe, throughout the four years. So uh, NYU Abu Dhabi made me more of a global citizen. Muspa, mm -hmm. you probably heard the name before, yeah, right? Sir. Yeah, I've heard that one. Yeah. So one of the originals. NYU Abu Dhabi's mission is to prepare students for meaningful action and making a difference through whatever means of work or endeavor they go after. Now, to learn to do that well, there's no better preparation than to be with lots of people who are very different from you. You would meet people who you would not have met otherwise. You would accept people who you would not have accepted otherwise. Now, I work for a philanthropic foundation here in Abu Dhabi, and we invest in arts, culture, and heritage, education, and health. I'm doing a job that impacts people. So I'm very happy that I'm working in the philanthropy sector and I'm very happy that Abu Dhabi has become my home. The thing I'm truly most proud of is that our graduates go into the world and they go forth and make change in the most important ways thanks to this education. What they want is to have an arc of a story, but we already talk about this. And it is that, but it's also <laughs> a cabaret. The thing yeah, is, it's a like show, it's, it's a concert. Like... I've always been very open and eager to connect with people. I just don't think I've found my group or I found a space where I would feel comfortable in my own skin and in my own body and with my scooter. Um, and I think coming to NYU Abu Dhabi was when this started shifting because everyone is so different in this environment that I didn't really feel like my difference was bad. Scotty's got my back, yeah. And if you don't like Scotty or if you don't have the room for him, then now I'm doing this capstone, which is centered so much around the scooter and the movements, and I'm doing these ice skating movements, like the Nancy Kerrigan move. And it's, it's changed my life, yeah. If they don't clap, I don't, I don't need anyone yeah. to clap. Or you could just bow and or just be like, thank you. force yeah. them into it. Well, thank you. NYU has become this wonderful network of study sites all around the world. What NYU has done differently from most universities, and NYU Abu Dhabi very much is a part of this, is make sure that the study away experience sends students to these sites in a way that connects to their research interests and what they want to learn for their majors. And so there are important through lines. I didn't really know that I wanted to do theater until I went to my study away in New York. I did a classical studio, which is one of the acting studios at NYU Tisch. And that's when I was really immersed into this acting world. When I got to New York City, 
my director welcomed me to use the scooter in my acting. And I was like, that's so weird. No one uses scooters in acting. That is ridiculous. Because I also fell into this narrative that disability is not welcomed on stage or that that's something that, you know, maybe you should shy away from. But through that acting experience is, I think, how I really got to own this identity and have it just be a part of me and really embrace it and bring it to everything I do. Our graduates have become very much coveted by employers here and abroad, as well as graduate schools, where they've developed a very unusual muscle, which is patience to listen to others, patience to understand not just the perspective of someone else, but the fact that it may be grounded in a reality and a background that's different from your own, and therefore is worth listening to. I realized that the mission is very unique. So I said, you know, this opportunity will not come again, and I have to take part in it. My name is Alexander McKay. I'm originally from a small island on the east coast of Canada, Prince Edward Island. And I had a couple jumps, and then eventually I've landed here at New York University, Abu Dhabi, where I study mechanical engineering. Prince Edward Island is a pretty humble place, I would say. Family is really important. Community is really important. My mother's family back home are all fishermen. They fish for lobster and bluefin tuna. I taught Alex two classes uh, in mechanical engineering. I think he's already a very talented and unique student himself. He's one of those students that work very hard, very active in the community of NYU Abu Dhabi and elsewhere. He's keen to learn about other cultures, despite coming from a very small village in Canada. Alex is an example of a student that have everything he needs. He just needs somebody to keep inspiring him. And that is the role that I took with Alex. Looking back in my past four years, I think the ability to have those hands-on experiences has really set this apart. I'm reflecting on being able to do glacier research in Greenland, being able to work in the informal settlements of India, being immersed in the city in Shanghai, and so many more. We're thrown into the midst of it as students here. We're thrown into it for, for better or for worse, and that's how we've learned to learn. Commencement is that one day where the whole institution and all the families associated with it stand up and say, you did this, congratulations. This is your first uh, visit to right, yeah. It is my first oh, visit. Just, I knew I wanted to come for his graduation, so I waited. That whole chapter of your life is coming to an end is a bit surreal. I think it's gonna hit me at the day of commencement. <laughs> I was always a kind of booky, nerdy kind of guy. And I think what's been nice is it's, it's been finding out people that you fit in with and vibe with, even if you're from completely different two sides of the street. You're the best. If I see something and someone will tell me, no, there's no way you can do this, I, I will be like, say it again? Okay, I'm doing it. Well done. Hey! I will be full of emotions. <laughs> I still feel like in September, I'm going back to NYU Abu Dhabi. I'm also very excited to, um, to what is ahead of me in the future. There's obviously a hint of sadness. It shows me that what we have here is a really special connection um, and that we really are a community. The honor that came into NYU Abu Dhabi was a bit timid. Whilst honor at this point, I'm embracing myself with everything that comes with it and trusting that, that there's a future. Simon Wilkes. It's been a once in a lifetime wonderful experience. And why Abu Dhabi was the best four years of my life. I'm like telling myself that I don't have to fear risk. I can just go for it. Tamara Gordieva. I think all of these experiences now looking back have shaped me into exactly who I am today. Hearing my name to call me up on stage for commencement I'll be thinking of the community that's watching me out in the audience and remembering the people that mean so much to me. Alexander McKay. I think there's nothing like NYU Abu Dhabi. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. <laughs>
um, it's opened my mind. To anyone who's thinking of applying to NYU AD, I just say, think of what you want to be. Are you thinking about it? NYU AD can make you become that.